Joining us now is General Abdul Salami Abubakar, former head of state of Nigeria, to discuss national issues, peacemaking efforts, and how we can put Nigeria in a much better place. Thank you very much, uh, General Abubakar, for joining us on the morning show. You're welcome. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Challenge, and you've been quoted in the paper saying that Nigeria is in a difficult place at this moment, given the various security challenges that we have, the ethnic conflict, the rhetoric uh, that we're facing. Uh, you are chairman of the National Peace Committee. What do you think we need to do to rescue Nigeria from the precipice? Well, thank you for asking that question. Uh, this kidnapping, uh, armed robbery, and the, and the recent ethnic clashes that is happening in the various countries has called for concern. And certainly, every uh, right-thinking Nigeria is is uh, commenting on the need for peace. So that's why we decided in the Peace Committee to add our voice to the call of all Nigerians to give peace a chance. Yeah, but in, in specific terms, I, I, I wanted to know what steps are uh, is your committee uh, taking in terms of engagement and in terms of recommendations uh, to the various stakeholders? All right, first on the first uh, step, the, the government of the day, whether at the state or the federal level, we are discussing with them and advising them what steps to do on so that peace can reign in our place, in our country. And on the part of uh, the population, we are mobilizing them, sensitizing them to play their own role in giving peace a chance, to be each other's keeper, and also to realize that there is strength in diversity. Nigeria has been, for a long time, we have been living together with each other. There is no part of this country where you will go, you will not find Nigerians living happily together. So in terms of what uh, an individual can do is to make sure that we liaise with the government in helping the government in fight intelligence. Okay, sir. Uh, th thank you so much for that, sir. I just want to ask you uh, your take on this continuous farmer heather clashes across the country, across the length and breadth of the country. Uh, any solutions, any ideas? It's not. It's been on for quite a while. Any solutions to this? Lasting solutions? Well, it is unfortunate. If you go throughout the history of farmers and herders, all over the world, there is this problem, especially in Africa. But some countries have found ways to address this problem. And I think Nigeria also, we should now study what other countries have done in order to, to implement such uh, actions so that we can um, finish this problem. In terms of uh, what can the government of the day do, Uh, let me give an example of Niger State here, where they have start, started uh, putting a cattle ranch 
uh, in some areas and trying to get the uh, herders to put their cattle uh, in that place and to provide necessary facilities such as water, water point, veterinary stations, uh, uh, and so on and, and so forth. Uh, and also to put schools for the children and uh, the community living in the large. It's unfortunate that of recent the herders have started arming themselves and are causing some of the problems that we are going through. On the part of the government, I think what we can do is to try to see how we can stop the proliferation of small arms in the country. Well, sir, you've been quoted as saying that uh, Nigeria is at a point where, if we're not careful, we may experience uh, disintegration, that Nigeria is at a point of no return, as it were. Now, how serious, how desperate is our situation? And you called on the uh, governors of the 36 states to take full responsibility. But these are the same governors we have been seeing, saying that uh, they are just paper tigers where security is concerned. Some of them have even wept openly to show that uh, uh, they are totally, completely helpless. Uh, what exactly can these governors do when half of the time they are either weeping or calling on people to uh, defend themselves? Well, it's unfortunate. Uh, you said the governors are puppet tigers. I, I wouldn't say that. The governors have found themselves in a difficult situation. It is their responsibility to govern the states regardless of who and who is living in their state. So it is uh, sad that suddenly, suddenly that uh, ethnic uh, disharmony is rarely said all over the place. You could, you could see where the herders are being chased from the, in, in some part of the southern states, and their cattle are being uh, killed, certainly this will heighten tension in the country. And, and it did. And you could see some people are migrating from one part of the country back to their states where they feel safer. Uh, God forbid this is taking us back to the 1960s where we had problem and this resulted into the civil war and people uh, who are old enough knew what has happened. So that's why the Peace Committee and myself were calling for caution so that we do not go back to that road. As to the governors, you said, what can they do? Well, one, they must make sure that there is law and order in their state. And they should watch their utterances because what they say, people will take it as uh, an order so that we as leaders, or they as the governors, should be aware of what they say. They should not say anything that will uh, be misread, that they are fighting people who are not of their state origin. Having said that, there must be dialogue between the people whom they feel are committing crimes in their area. Certainly, if somebody is making a crime, they should be arrested and prosecuted. It is their responsibility to save the life and property of all Nigerians who are living within, within their state. Right. Uh, 
Sir, what would you say about the discordant tunes, even among the governor? Recently, there was the case of the Bauchi state governor uh, saying something and the Undo state governor reacting to it as regards, you know, the reason why some herders carry AK-47 uh, for them to protect themselves against cattle rustling. I'd missed all of the situation. I mean, what's your take on all this discordant tunes? Because it looks as to, to me that it has become a free-for-all. Um, this is why, again, we decided to caution all Nigerians. In the statement we issued, we, you might have seen and read where we are calling on the governors to work in unity. If they have any differences, they have a forum where they can sit down and sort themselves. Because if the citizens see that the governors are each other's throat, then we are at the mercy of uh, whatever anybody can do. So it is necessary for the governors in their governors forum to sit down and analyze the problems and try to get a solution. It is said that the governor, one governor, will just wake up in the media and say whatever he wants to say, and the other one, of course, will react, and this is not uh, harmonious. They should work in harmony. Well, sir, I mean, um, sometime last year, you were saying, uh, I think on the occasion of Nigeria's uh, independence anniversary, that Nigerians must learn from past mistakes. We'll be right back. Our guest is still General Abdul Salami Abubakar, former head of state of Nigeria. <laughs> Welcome back to The Morning Show here on Arise News. Our guest is still former head of state, General Abdul Salami Abubakar, who has been making some observations about the security situation in Nigeria. General, thank you for staying with us. I was saying that last year, sometime last year, you said Nigerians should uh, learn from past mistakes. But if you look at what is happening in the country at this moment, we seem not to have the capacity to learn from the past because all these issues we're dealing with now there are issues that have been on the table ever since. Uh, why is it so difficult for Nigerians, the people, the leaders also, to learn from past mistakes? And how can we reorientate the average Nigerian at whatever level he or she may be? Well, it's very unfortunate that we are refusing to learn. The leaders and the followers all have a role to play. Maybe if in our school we start to teach harmony and teach history of what has happened, why nations go to war within and outside the country, maybe this will help us to learn. Because uh, it is uh, really, really disturbing that Nigerians will now fight themselves because they I, I come from one state or the other. We have been living in harmony. And suddenly these uh, issues are reared in their head. How long can Nigerians keep fighting themselves? How long will it take them to learn that the, we must be each other's keepers and we must learn to live together? A lot of intermarriages has gone, has taken place in Nigeria. So I really cannot answer your question why Nigerians are not learning from the first mistake. It's a very unfortunate and it's a very serious uh, issue. Maybe the, we need to revive what uh, uh, I think during the military they put out MAMSA, where people are educated and being sensitized on the need to live in peace and harmony. And also for this organization to keep reminding Nigerians the consequences of fighting each other. 
Nothing short of that I think we can do to, to sensitize our people. And I think as NGOs and uh, organizations have got a big role to play in that. Because uh, when we fight ourselves with uh, destruction, the little money we have, you have to now to rebuild what has been destroyed. And when people lose their life, they are gone forever. So I think we must revive this sensitization at all levels, from local government to state government and to the federal government. Uh, thank you for your insight. At the heart of this, a lot of people are complaining, is constitutional issue, restructuring, people should be able to control their own resource, as it was in the 60s. In fact, one step further, a lot of people have even blamed the Nigerian constitution as a factor. That doesn't account for the people, doesn't make their lives better. In fact, somebody that served in your administration, John Nyai Wodu, the former president of Ohanez Indigo, did say at the Daily Trust Forum that he did not see the Nigerian constitution before President Olusha Gobasujo was sworn. And he made very strong no, statements there, but I can't hear him. as regards that. I mean, what's your take on that? As regards even the constitutional issue, when the information minister said the constitution was swore in the new democratically elected government then, he didn't see it. What's your take about that? Sir? Well, I don't want to take issues with uh, what John has said. But all Nigerians were aware of Nikki Tobi committee that went around and listened to people. The issue of constitution is neither here nor there. Whatever is done, it depends on the people. 22 years after I left governance, people are talking, 1999 constitution. If that constitution was not perfect and no constitution is perfect, what has the elected members done to rectify or to change the constitution? You know, the whatever is in the paper, it depends on how we implement it. Today, you find that in developing countries, they look into their conscience and they amend whatever they think what is to be done. So I don't think uh, whatever is happening in Nigeria should be heaped on the Constitution. Let us try to see what is good for us and try to implement. Well, when you are talking of restructuring, well, I agree with you that people should be given their right to administer themselves the way they feel that they should do so that there is um, development in their area. So now when you are talking of uh, restructuring, re really it depends who is talking and, and what is meant by restructuring. For example, if people are agitating, they, have, they should be given their right to administer themselves. Okay, right now, the states are under state governments, and the, there are houses of assembly in those states, and they promulgate laws and implement whatever they feel is right in their state. Now, what I will see, maybe there are such in duties that the federal government should withdraw their hands from and allow the state government, for example, in terms of education, the uh, federal government should set up the uh, standard and monitor what is happening, and so on and so forth. 
Well, sir, um, talking about the Constitution, the 1999 Constitution, I know there have been many critics who have said, oh, General Abubakar just put together a committee and imposed this military constitution on the people. Uh, but I get your point about, what, so what have the uh, successors done about it? But I'd like to go back to the issue about state governors and what state governors can possibly do. If you look at that same constitution, 1999 constitution, the control of security, appointment of uh, service chiefs, appointment of uh, uh, police uh, inspector general, uh, all the powers are vested in the head of state, the president of uh, Nigeria. Will you recommend that those sections of the constitution should be reviewed to give more powers uh, to state governors? And in that regard, will you also support this clamor for state police so that these governors can, be, can at least have some authority with regard to security in their states? Please, can you come again? I have, lo I have lost you. Yes, sir. I was asking, since you say maybe the federal government uh, should uh, divest itself of some duties under the Constitution, and that 1999 Constitution being so controversial, will you, along the same lines, uh, support the idea of state police to give the state governors more power so that they can be more in charge in terms of security in their states? Okay, yeah, you, since you are talking about the Constitution, let me again elaborate on the 1999 Constitution. We set up a committee led by uh, an eminent ju ju jurist in the passing of a Supreme Court judge of late uh, Nikki Toby. May his, rest, uh, may his soul rest in peace. He went around through, he went around the six zones of this country listen to people, and by the time they came and finalized what they have had, they found out that most of the people were referring to 1979 Constitution. So if you look at 1999 Constitution and 1979 Constitution, there isn't too much of a difference. Of course, they tidy up here and there. I'm not a, a legal person. And when we say the Supreme Military Council, whatever, has set up this uh, uh, constitution, it's, you know very well, and Nigerians know very well. Well, yes, because under the leadership of the military, this constitution was amalgamated. You, you, cannot, you cannot say the military has imposed a constitution on you. However, as it may be, yes, there are searching powers that need to, look, to be looked into. And this is what I was saying since uh, 1999. What has our Senate and House of Assemblies and uh, House of Assemblies have done to rectify what they think is wrong with that cons constitution? Now, as to the matter of appointing service chiefs and IG, certainly this is the duty of the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of Nigeria and the President. As to the issue of uh, having a state police, I, I think it's an issue that we should sit down and talk reasonably. Where we find that it is necessary to have the uh, state police, so be it. So that, like you said, the uh, um, uh, state governors will now have control on their authority, so that they are the chief security officers in the state, so that they will now be able to deploy uh, where they feel the need for security. But this cannot be done in a haste. We must sit down and look the pros and cons. When me and you were children, we, we grew up to find that, yes, there are state police. And people are afraid that uh, the state governors will, uh, will use the state police to intimidate their political opponents. I think it is neither here nor there. Even now, if there is intimidation, so we have to sit down rationally and see. So if we feel 
that we need state police, I repeat again, so let it be. And again, while we are doing that, look, let us look to our finances. At, this, at now, the state cannot pay their sal salary of their civil servants. Now, when you increase the uh, payroll by uh, recruiting police into the system, you have to find out exactly how you can balance between security and other needs of the state. By and large, uh, whether we like it or not, uh, the, the, my, my opinion is that in one guise or the other, the states have already set, uh, set up their uh, state police, is either by uh, one type of uh, vanguard or the other. These people are operating, and they are being supported by the state governments. So I think in order to legalize this, let us sit down and formally give a blessing so that we can now move forward, so that we can have peace in the country. Yes, sir. Well, you said uh, if uh, people agree on state police after a reasonable discussion, uh, then so be it. But what do you think of this concern by many Nigerians that this set of governors that we have who are so partisan, if they are given more powers, and that's the other side of it, they could abuse the uh, state police to run their uh, opponents out of power instead of using it as a vehicle for peace and for achieving the objective of federalism. Okay, we'll take another quick break while we sort that out, and we'll be right back. Our guest is still General Abdul Salami Abubakar, former head of state of Nigeria. Show here on the Arise News Channel. We're still having a conversation with former head of state General Abdul Salami Abubakar, who is with us live from Mino. Uh, General, I, I was saying uh, before the uh, audio issue that we had that yes, uh, you don't seem to be opposed to the idea of state police or giving more powers to state governors. And you say if there is a reasonable di discussion along that line, so be it. But what do you think of the fear? expressed by some people that these state uh, governors, if you give them more powers, and that's the other side of the uh, question I originally asked, that they will abuse it, that they will use it uh, to intimidate the opposition in their states instead of for the larger objectives of uh, peace and uh, security. The problem we have at the state level, is it really one of leadership? How we recruit the kind of persons who become governors in the states? Well, the politics in developing country is something. But I think Nigeria should rise up to the occasion where, regardless of party affiliation, they should elect responsible representatives, either in the Senate or in the House of Assembly, or for, for the governorship. And I, I think once these people are elected, the right people will realize the responsibility uh, on their head. And they swear to the Constitution and the Quran on the Bible that they will do justice and uh, be fair to all and sundry. So I, I, I think if uh, the people are gentlemen or uh, will abide by what they swell in on and do the right thing, I think that fear will be minimized. You, you can see everywhere, even in developing countries, they are accu accusing of the government of the day, using and coercing the power, using security agencies to do what they will favor them. So I think this is an issue that is uh, nationwide. So the fear of that, that the governors will abuse their opportunity is neither here nor there. We should be able to elect responsible people who will do right to everybody. There must be equity and justice. Once you are an elected, you belong to all everybody. You are not the governor of the opposition and the people in your party. 
So you must do justice and equity. After all, it is your state. They are your citizens. So you must be fair to them. So there shouldn't be any intimidation uh, as far as I'm concerned. Well, thank you for that, uh, General. But uh, before we take the next question, we have a breaking news here. Uh, Nigeria's uh, food and drug agency, NAVDAC, has approved AstraZeneca vaccine for emergency use authorization in Nigeria. At the end of its trialing process, the Nigerian Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAVDAC, has approved the AstraZeneca vaccine for use in the prevention of COVID-19 in the country. We will get more details across to you in the course of our subsequent bulletins today. Thank you for staying us, uh, with us, uh, General uh, Rufai. Over to you. All right. Uh, th thank you so much uh, for the insights, as always. Uh, no number one question will be to you, sir. You were CDS in your time. You were Chief of Defense Staff. Uh, are there some insights you might want to share with this new crop we have that have come in to hit the ground running as regards security from your own antecedents as former Chief of Defense Staff? Uh, and secondly, what's your take on this new wave of security apparatus set up across regions now. We're hearing about Amotekun, we're hearing about some attempts, even in the north, to set up security apparatus, or your inside security network and the likes. What's your take on this new wave? Is it, is it telling us something that we don't understand? Well, first, uh, we just finished talking about uh, uh, local or state police. So all these organizations you are saying actually are state police in one way or the other. So that is why I say let us sit down and uh, discuss and formalize so that people know that the, we have all constitutionally people are, states are allowed to help uh, state police rather than all doing this and through the back door. Now, to the new service chiefs, of course, for somebody to, the, to rise to the rank of a general and be appointed to head that organization, certainly must have been trained, must have been exposed. So my advice to them is, one, first and foremost, the welfare of the uh, people under them. Utilization of the weapons and all equipments under their care, and proper utilization of the troops under their command. There is need for gathering of intelligence through human intelligence, the equipment intelligence, and these uh, citizens also have to help in giving human intelligence to uh, the, the services who are there to protect them. I, I, I believe all the services, in fact, all the generals and officers whose lives of troops are, uh, are entrusted to them will bring their training to the expertise because right when you join the military, the first thing they teach you is uh, how to look after troops and giving under your care. You have to look into their welfare, their lives, and so on and so forth. So they should now go back to their training days to see what is needed in order to keep morale and ensure that there is success in whatever missions that they are, they are doing. I'm absolutely sure the service chief and all the officers and men in our armed forces are capable people. And once they are properly looked after, I am absolutely sure uh, they will do well. Well, General, let's talk about the National Peace Committee and uh, the electoral process in Nigeria. I mean, in 1999, you midwifed the uh, uh, return to democratic rule. And since 2015, through the umbrella of the uh, National Peace Committee, you have been uh, engaged in uh, the electoral process in Nigeria to ensure transparency, uh, peaceful conduct of elections, and all of that. But from 
what that peace committee has done. Uh, what are your observations in terms of what INEC uh, still needs to do to deepen the democratic process? Only this morning we were talking with uh, Dr. Festus Okoye of uh, INEC, who is the Director of Information and uh, Voter Education. And we were talking about polling units, additional polling units, and how Nigerians are expressing concern that these additional polling units would favor one country, uh, one part of the country against the other. We talked about uh, electronic voting. But what are your observations? What do you think INEC should be focusing upon as we move towards 2023 general elections? All right, thank you very much. Um, elections world over are problems. We have seen what is happening in developing country. We have seen what has happened in America recently. So that should be a lesson to all of us. Now, to Inek, you know, the ball is not only in uh, Inek's uh, foot, but to the citizens of the country. We, as citizens, have a role to ensure that we elect and do our citizens' duty. Electorates should learn to look at the caliber of the contestants, regardless of what party. We should not join the bandwagon of our party now. We should look at the caliber of the man or the lady we want to represent us. Because this is a big responsibility you are giving to the elected uh, gentleman or lady. So let us look and play our own role. Now the politicians should stop corrupt, corrupting our people by enticing them with food, with whatever. And we, the citizens also, should not expect these politicians to come and give us something before we elect them. It's unfortunate this is a deep-rooted problem in developing countries and in Nigeria. In 1999, when we were preparing for the election, three weeks to the election, I was visiting a community, and I was shocked by somebody who asked me that I told him elections are coming, they have not seen the sign. So I said, what signs are you looking for? Uh, the answer I got was that they have not seen soap, they have not seen salt, and so on and so forth. And unfortunately, in the year 2019, the, the, the same ball game is there. People expect the uh, uh, people seeking posts to come and entice them, give them clothes, give them this, give them and that. I think we should come out of that. And I hope the NGOs and all stakeholders will make it clear to the electorates we have reached a point that we should do away with all this. We should elect somebody whom we feel will be able to deliver the dividends of democracy to us. Right, uh, sir, you, you talked in your speech about something that caught me. Uh, you used a particular term called the point of no return. And you stated all what is happening, the ethnic tensions and the likes. And that's quite shocking because it is a very dire time for us in our country. How can we avoid getting to the point of no return? And I also add to that, how can Nigerians come together and protect themselves in a country where the Minister of Defense has said, oh, you know, people should stand up to the bandits. How can we do that? Well, what I mean, we are reaching a point of no return. For people who are old enough to recollect what happened during the Civil War, what are the things that led to the Civil War? 
people from different states are being attacked, killed, maimed, their properties destroyed, and people started immigrating to their states of origin. And this is what is happening now. You will see all over the country, because of the happening in the southern part of the country, the northern, northerners are migrating back to, to the north, and the, our brothers from the south in the north are now thinking, are uh, in fear, they are preparing to go back to their, uh, to their country, uh, to their state. Uh, and God forbid, if this continues, what, can we, what will happen? If the people in the north are feeling that uh, their people have been attacked, as what has happened recently in Ibadan and some part of eastern part of the country, and uh, the, the north now can do the final attack, I think that's what I'm, I'm saying. We're, we're reaching point of no return. So this is why it is necessary for us to sensitize ourselves that we must learn to live together. As, as, as I said, even if this country is divided, I think we must live together. We have, there have been intermarriages and so on and so forth. And certainly we must, we have to live with each other. Well, I'm not holding brief for the uh, uh, Minister of Defense because uh, I'm just hearing it from you that uh, he has made some uh, statement. Of course, as much as the security agencies are there, I know that it's a role the citizens have to do in terms of giving uh, intelligence because these people are among us. When the, these bandits are approaching to go and do their havoc, people see them. So if we, with the Istanbul information, of course they could be intercept, intercepted. So what, what, what all that I can say is yes, we need to equip our Armed forces give them intelligence uh, uh, gathering equipment, either by uh, machines, by uh, humans, uh, intelligence, and so on. Before we reach this stage, there, there is organization where uh, we inform, in, information intelligence is gathered. It, we have passed uh, the stage where people say, if you give information, you will be exposed. I, I think this uh, exposing of intelligence source is being uh, dramatized. I don't think anybody who can give you inform, information to make you perform your duty better, you go and expose him. I, I don't think uh, uh, this still stands. Well, sir, I would like to ask you uh, two personal questions. In May 1999, you handed over power to uh, General Basinjo. In other words, you uh, midwife the transition from military rule to uh, democratic rule. Now, it's been uh, about 21 years since then. When you look back, uh, do you sometimes feel maybe you should have delayed a bit? Maybe you shouldn't have handed over? Uh, do you sometimes feel that way? Uh, out of uh, your observations of how the country has fed since then. And then there are people who still uh, criticize you heavily, uh, not just for the 1999 constitution, which we talked about. Some people say, well, you supported General Sani Abacha. And some people uh, go for that to say that when you took over government, uh, you could have uh, taken certain steps to prevent the death in custody of uh, Chief uh, Moshud uh, Abiola. Uh, the uh, winner of the uh, uh, 1993 uh, presidential election. Well, thank you very much for all these uh, questions. One, uh, that I should uh, forestall the death of Abiola 
it's very unfortunate for people who are making that statement. You know, once somebody's time is up, he will, he will, he will die one way or the other. It's very unfortunate that before we address the issue of Abiola, he passed away. We have talked about all this a long time. So if people feel that I should have uh, released him much earlier, it's unfortunate. You know, things take their own step. Now, when, again, you ask the issue that I supported Abacha, I was an officer of the Nigerian military system, and I was under the Nigerian army, so to speak. I was, uh, Abacha did not recruit me into the army. We grew up together in ranks, and both of us reached the rank of general. Now, because he became head of state and I was chief of defense staff, certainly I was part and parcel of the military system. So to say I, 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 served, I served him, of course I was his chief of defense staff. It is neither here nor there uh, because I was still part and parcel of the, of the military. If you are accusing me of being uh, serving uh, Abacha, then you are accusing the whole of members of the armed forces. Okay. Now, I can't remember no, the other the, the other to, leg of the question was Can you was remind that, me? Yes, I said, do you sometimes feel that, well, uh, when you handed over in uh, 1999, maybe you should have delayed a bit when you look at what has transpired in the last uh, 21 years. Uh, do you sometimes look back and say, well, perhaps maybe you shouldn't have handed over, or maybe you should have uh, delayed a little bit? Uh, on the contrary, I'm happy with what we did, and given the opportunity, we'll do the same thing. Be, 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 because uh, when I came in, the country was at the brink of breaking. And there was a yearning all over for democracy. And we listened to the yearning of Nigerians and did what they wanted. And of course, since uh, the last 21 years, of course there is development in democracy. Of course, everything, everything is not perfect. It's a learning process, and I think Nigerians are learning. And I hope we'll continue to improve in our democratic system. Right. Uh, I just want to ask you... Where parties will not impose a candidate on citizens. And I hope the citizens also will now raise their eyes up to the occasion. If a candidate is imposed of them, they do anti-party activity and vote whom they think should, should, should be elected. Okay, sir. Uh, real quickly, I just want to ask you... Uh, on, on the whole, I have no regret on what we did. And I, I must say, uh, I repeat again, democracy is improving in our country. Okay. Let me ask you this way, sir. What do you think, one or two things you felt you could have done better while you were in government? And secondly... What are your legacies? What would you say are your legacies when you look back in time? Well, as to my legacies, I will leave it to the history and to Nigerians. And um, what would I have done better? Well, I certainly, at that time, we, we did what we thought was right, and we did it. Of course, uh, as humans, we might not have met up quite expectation of the people, but that's life. Well, uh, uh, it's been uh, quite some time since you retired, and we see you've been very busy, uh, still engaging society and also functioning as uh, a global statesman. But how has life been uh, in retirement? Are you enjoying it, or sometimes? You miss the uniform or the opportunity to still be in charge of Nigeria. 
Uh, certainly, I'm enjoying my retirement. I thank God he has kept me alive this far. And uh, my prayer is that Nigeria should prosper and we should continue to live in peace and be each other's keeper. All right. Uh Oh, okay. Uh, okay. R real quickly, uh, General, I I'd just like to ask you this before we go. Uh, as a father of the nation, I just want you to say something to the parents of those children in Kagara now, you know, that are in the den of bandits and kidnappers, you know, and they are hoping to get back home. So just say something to them as a father of the nation. Well, let me, on behalf of all Nigeria, sympathize with the parents of all those children who have been kidnapped. It is very, very sad and very unfortunate. And I appeal to all these kidnappers, for God's sake, let God touch their minds with mercy. Let them stop what they are doing. You kidnap somebody and demand money. What are you going to do with that money? In your conscience, will you enjoy that money? So I am praying and I plead to all these uh, miscreants to please abandon this and come and join hands to live in harmony. Well, I and I hope they will ask for forgiveness from the people they have abducted and tormented. Well, thank you very much. And I pray that Nigeria sees peace. Thank you very much, General Abdul Salami Abubakar, for joining us today on The Morning Show. Thank you very much indeed.